Hello and welcome to the world premiere of my very first tutorial. I should start off by saying I come at this purely as an artist and a filmmaker, a creative person, and I'm not here to push any product. And also, there's too much to go into to educate fully on these programs, so some familiarity is assumed. How to extrude drawn vector shapes into 3D space where we can manipulate them and revere them and honor them as they deserve. Now this workflow is really important to me because I'm an artist in many mediums and I like doing as much as I can in my videos. So I spent weeks trying to figure out how to draw and bring those shapes in. So let's start by opening a new file in Adobe Illustrator. Default settings are fine. Name it whatever you like. And go to File, Place, and browse for the object, or the drawing rather, that you want to trace. I needed to turn this logo, this two-dimensional drawing, into a three-dimensional object. So set your opacity low. I go about 20%. And then you want to lock your selection. And you can't move it by accident. Push P for pen, and you probably want to zoom in a little bit. Glasscraft is one of my clients and I thought I would honor them by showing this in this demo. Oh, I like to turn the stroke and the face color off while I draw so as not to be distracted. If we are talking about company logos, you can't take your liberties with them. Obviously, the ideal solution would be to have files with exact work paths handed to you by the company's graphic artist, but that's not always how it works, and sometimes you will have to reproduce work by yourself, in which case, do not rush, do not fudge it if you can't figure out how to do something, don't take any liberties with the lines, the curves, anything. A company's logo is ideally to communicate a lot of things about that company and the style of the line is part of that communication. So take your time and when you're done you'll have something you can move forward with. For me I had to draw all the separate elements of this logo and even though it looks like there's no color there is a white face here now. If I were to click a color you'd see but it's white so it looks clear. Make sure there is a face there. You don't want to just bring work paths into motion. It won't see them. So save it where you like and save it as an SVG file. The default setting should work. You can put SVG for type you know, under fonts. Click OK. And now you've got your SVG files. And the next step is to open Apple Motion. And again, it's assumed you have M Object, a Motion VFX plugin for this particular workflow. So here's the Motion Project Browser. Open it up a little bit if you like. Final Cut Generators, choose M Object. Now here you can see where I finished. We'll get to that later. For now, just open up this simple M Object generator with the font right there. And here we are in motion and you see the type in all of its glory and splendor fit in wonderfully next to your Cordoba milk bar lounge chair. 
Again, I'm not getting any money or free plugins from Motion VFX for this, although I wouldn't turn them away. <clears throat> Just featuring some tools that helped me do what I wanted to do. Go to your inspector and click the green button, Edit Scene. This will call up the M object interface. If you've worked in Maya or Blender or any 3D modeling software, you'll recognize it. The mesh and the directional handles. Now click this other green button, 3D Extrude, and this first time you want to click Edit, not New. You want to choose SVG. Company drops in its logo, you can ignore that. Just browse to your own hard drive and find your SVG file or files. OK. And here you have the first piece. Look at that glorious 3D object from your drawn SVG file. You can see the lights, the motion lights in the air. Click 3D Extrude again, this time click New, SVG, browse to your hard drive, pick your file. Unfortunately, you can't pick more than one at a time, so we have to go one file at a time. We'll speed through this. The process is the same each time, 3D Extrude, SVG, browse, OK. And, of course, you can't see the preview because it's just a white-faced vector file. But it's there. We checked. I've left the bevel settings and extrusion settings all at their default. But, of course, you can tinker with any parameter you see fit. I had to make a real effort not to turn this entire video into an M-Object tutorial. Because it's fun and it has a lot of power. And now you will go about assembling your piece as you like in the 3D space. I suppose you could also arrange these in motion. This is the way I did it. I think I kind of missed the 3D modeling software environment. But you could as easily arrange these in motion. Here's the cameras. You'll recognize cameras if you're familiar with 3D spaces. They give you a fixed view so you can see if your layers are misaligned, if your objects are lining up the way you wanted them to. You'll be, oh, I didn't notice this wasn't as thick as the others. So that's what those cameras are good for. And you have your adjustments down here. X, Y, scale, rotation, etc. and your environments too. I could go on and on, but check this one out. Look at that. You can feel the summer sun on your skin. Amazing. So pick the environment that you like, save, and you're back in motion. And here you are with your logo you can set some keyframes and create the animation and the lighting that you want. I'm going to skip all that. I'm just showing you the basic workflow. So you've made your keyframed animations. You've set up your lights as you like. And then you want to save as. And I create a new category for mine. Blazing Heart Video. Name it what you like. I'll name it something super creative. Save a preview movie if you want to be able to see it play in Final Cut Pro before you bring it into the timeline. And publish. Wait a few moments while it does its business. You'll get an OK. And you can close out. And now the final leg of the journey. We open Final Cut Pro X or 10, if you like. You 
see in generators, we have a Blazing Heart video category. And there it is. It's, it's a ghastly little thing here, but I was just being fast. Shift C. And you can see it play. Right inside Final Cut Pro. You might decide the bevel isn't quite right or the size of one of the pieces isn't quite right. You click the green edit scene button in the inspector and M object opens again inside Final Cut Pro. We don't begin here because you need motion to animate it. But if you want to change it in any way, materials, environment, shaders, you can bring in an OBJ file and add it to the mix. You can make it red. We won't do that, but you could. So now let's go to the finished product, just like this is a cooking show. I pull the completed casserole out as soon as I put the fresh one in. Here it is at the opening of a timeline for a promotional spot I did recently. Added some light to it. Let's watch that again full screen. This took their logo to the next level. You can do this with logos or with any object you draw. If you like this and how I presented it, find me on the social media and I'll know to do more. Take care.